Has this ever happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. 3.28 a.m. Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. If you're stuck turning your loops into songs, keep watching and I'll show you my tricks of how to get out of these eight bar loops and onto making bangers. Tip number one. Generally, when I start out a song, I'll have something simple like this chord and this melody. And you want to try and hear where it goes next. But if your loop is extra short like this one, like this one's technically only four bars. If you're having trouble actually hearing where it goes next, chances are you're stuck in this loop because your melody or your chords resolve, AKA it sounds like it ends. And a lot of newer producers don't even realize that their chords are doing this. So the sooner that you can pick this up, the sooner you can start creating more songs. Let's say we've got a MIDI clip like this. We can get around this by experimenting and do this by reversing, moving around a few MIDI notes. We can even change this chord a bit too. Maybe even changing up the rhythm. Mess around enough and you might come up with happy little accidents. A famous painter once said, life is full of happy little accidents. So get out there and make some. Wait, tip number two. You want to structure now, not later. Now that you've reduced the resolution, you can try to see where the song goes. And what I do as soon as I hear this is I'll immediately make sections. So using Ableton's notes feature and locator, you can start breaking stuff up. So I can like call this drop and I'm going to set aside eight bars here, call that build up. And you do this even if it's as simple as verse build up drop. And what I'll do is I'll maybe take some of these. Let's assign it to a new instrument. Like, let's make this my verse. Even for a buildup, I'll just use a lazy buildup sample just to structure it out. And then we have a bit more direction of where the song goes. And by just structuring them up, you might even hear where you can start messing around with certain sections of the song to change it up. It's about getting that flow state going. Your natural instinct might be to, to layer these songs. Let's say like, oh, we'll add a hi-hat and working vertically throughout the loop. As computer music makers, we tend to add to what we're currently doing instead of moving forward. At this stage, you wanna avoid layering and working forward instead of working down. I like to say, so even extending this and making your changes as you go forwards in the song, rather than adding another layer each time you wanna make a change. And I, you can argue that there is a whole genre of music that's adding one layer after another, but even that is structured. It builds on itself as the song continues to go. Since these artists are making this type of music on the spot, it sounds like it's progressing rather than you sitting in your DAW looping every 30 seconds and having it not change. Even try making that the structure where you add a new element with each 16 bar loop. Plus, if you're afraid of commitment like me, you don't even have to worry. We're living in the digital age now. You can make crazy change. And if you don't like it, you can just go back or change something else. But having that initial structure will just help your song come together so much faster. Tip number three, the aha. Now I said avoid layering, but once you have the song mapped out, even just a little bit, you can start testing out other elements to see if they work in the context of your song. Because as you start introducing certain things, like how I did with this vocal chop, you're gonna come up with that aha moment. That element will just kind of pop out and you wanna lead somewhere with it. Kind of like there's Yo, that's, yo. But if you're still having trouble, I like to play around with Ableton's effects. So you can take a loop like this. I can control J, consolidate that, make a new MIDI track with Simpler on it. Bring in that sample, set it to slice mode. And then you can play around with the MIDI keyboard on it. That.
and it's just another form of experimentation. I mean, from this one, I found one good loop, but you can experiment with different sensitivities. But as long as you're moving forward, so you take, you stop this, and then that's one section, and then this will be the next section. You can even do a, a longer section of the vocal chop. Slice it all up like that. So that's on slice mode. You can play around with sensitivity and just drag any chord in. Plus arpeggiator. Have your like crazy fracks in. Play with the rate. And the gate. Or you can be like me. Just chop it up manually. It's little techniques that give you ideas of how to expand the song. And this goes to tip number four where you find inspiration and you try to keep things simple. You can start by finding a song you like, see if there are any sections of that song that you think would be cool to put into yours. You can tell from this, it's a very Skrillex vocal chop-esque. And that's what I'm trying to emulate for this specific song. As you listen to more songs or listen to more artists, don't be afraid to try and take some of those techniques and mix and match them with your songs. This is where you can get all production nerdy and have fun with all the effects, all the sound designs. So you can get crazy plugins like Infiltrator, which will like really mess your sounds up. Stuff like this is just freaking crazy. But this tip I just want to give with a bit of caution because it can lead you down this rabbit hole, which will actually hurt you instead of help you. Don't get fooled into thinking you need crazy stuff like this. Like I can do all of this stuff with just Ableton's stock stuff. Like we can get rid of Infiltrator. Let's just use Frequency Shifter instead. And you're just doing fun stuff, right? You're not trying to come up with any crazy thing. You're just putting stuff on. Turning knobs. This can lead to momentum. And that's what you're trying to get. So putting delay on a crazy feedback. And just really getting wild with the actual production side of stuff. Don't try and convince yourself that you need a plugin to break out of the loop. Try to focus on structure a bit more rather than being stuck in your loops and using a specific plugin to get out. You're using each plugin in different sections in order to build out that song more. Because if you get stuck in that rabbit hole, your bank account won't be happy about it. And your hard drive is just going to be full of 30 second ideas. I'm talking to you, Ash. Which leads to tip number five. As you're using plugins to build on these sections, you can use it to create dynamics and transition. This especially helps when switching sections. You're supporting all the foundational elements like your chords and your melodies and using these different plugins and effects to move from one section to another. For example, I put the auto filter on the build up here, have it automating up in the build up. And then I'm also automating the vocoder here to turn on as soon as the drop hits. Another cool thing you can do, take this section, let's reverse it. Or in another section here like this, let's take another vocal chop, put it at the end here, reverse it. Just to move it into the next section. This can be done with sweeps and filters impacts things to just make transitions smoother and the smoother you can make transitions the more sections you can move between and that is getting you out of that eight bar loop this kind of goes back to tip number one as well where you're trying not to have everything resolve as much as possible so even just taking a bit of silence there And if you're extra lazy like me, you can try changing the rhythm of the drums like I just did. If you don't want to change the melody too much, you can just change the rhythm of it. Essentially what I've done with these guys here. All of these ideas, I'm not doing them vertically. We're moving forward. As you build out the song, you can structure it around that. So this B section here, I could say, oh, let's call this B section. Essentially what I'm saying is don't give up. Combine these tips with your instincts and keep going. You love making music, it's your passion. And even if you know when to stop because the thought of spending hours trying to make this loop work gets you down, don't get discouraged. 
look at it as practice and use what you learn in this sections for your next song. You seen that show Queen's Gambit? It took the person 30 freaking years, nine rewrites and multiple rejections from studios before it became a gigantic success. So whatever you're working on, keep going. Maybe go out, take a walk, listen to some other music, find that inspiration, touch grass, but more importantly, like and subscribe if you learned something today. If you wanna watch a video on making cool chords to start you off, check this video out here. Thank you so much for watching. Now go make some bangers.